My name's Lex Luthor, and I'm going to show you how to make kryptonite so that we can kill Superman together. This isn't some month-long crystal growing experiment. You can do this in one day with your kids. It's an easy project. You can even build the box that you just saw, which will be in the next video, in one day while you're growing the crystals. For this project, there's only a few things that you probably won't have around your house. 20 Mule Team Kryptonite, a multi-purpose powderized kryptonite that helps remove stains and neutralize odors. Purified, recrystallized bulk kryptonite. Weapons grade, 99.99% pure. A simple sheet of foam board and a self-opening LED book light from the dollar store. And a piece of polymerized foam. You can tell because it says poly in front of it, like polystyrene or polyisocyanurate. Now let's talk about the kryptonite. Now, you have two options for your substrate that you're gonna remove crystals from. One is 20 Mule Team Kryptonite Superman Killer. And you can get these labels in the description or from my website. That way you can stick it on your box of 4X, which is what this actually is. And you can grow crystals from this. Or pure kryptonite, weapons grade, purified, recrystallized bulk kryptonite. And you can order this online. And this is actually sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate. So it's your choice which one you want to use. This is faster, this is not quite as fast. Let's talk about the differences real quick. If you use 20 Mule Team Kryptonite, it will probably end up growing crystals that look somewhat like this. If you use pure weapons grade kryptonite, it will grow crystals that look somewhat like this. Typically when you grow crystals, you mix something into a solution and then as it evaporates or cools, it forms crystals. With the pure weapons grade kryptonite, you don't actually mix it with water and all you do is warm it up at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. This melts and as it cools, it will form crystals. We'll talk about that more later. You need to get a jump start if you're gonna use the 20 Mule Team Kryptonite, which is available almost everywhere thanks to LexCorp. You can get this at Walmart or anywhere else, it's only a couple of dollars. And this needs to be dissolved in water. And as the water cools and evaporates, it forms crystals. So this, we need to get a head start on. So let's talk about that now. With 20 Mule Team Powderized Kryptonite, you're going to wanna to add five tablespoons to one cup of filtered or distilled water and bring it to a boil as you stir it constantly. As soon as the solution turns clear, it's ready. Remove it from the heat, pour it through a coffee filter into a clean container. Now set this container to the side and cover it with a paper towel so that it can evaporate. If you decide you're going to use pure weapons grade kryptonite, you don't have to worry about making crystals out of this until much later on in the project because this grows crystals in minutes. The foam that I'm going to use to make the rock that my kryptonite is growing out of is this sheet of old polyisocyanurate. It's aluminum sided housing insulation foam. And this stuff, since it's poly, doesn't melt when you spray paint it. Poly means it's going through a chemical process. Basically, the solvents in the paint won't melt through the foam. Now, I'm going to do two because I'm going to grow one with the powderized 20 meal team kryptonite and one with the weapons grade crystallized kryptonite. So, now we need to shape these and get them looking like rocks that kryptonite would grow off of. All you need to do to make it look like a rock is take something and chip away at it to make it look rock-like. So I'm just gonna use this screwdriver and tear these up a little bit and make, get them to look like they're rocks. And then I'm gonna paint it. Oh, and these little fiberglass hairs that are in the middle of it for strength, you can just use a lighter or have your parents use a lighter to burn that out for you. That way it's not sticking out all over the place whenever you paint it, looking funny. Cause rocks don't have hairs, you know? Now once you have your rock ready, and it doesn't have to be that big because our overall box size is gonna be five by five at the end. Now you just need to poke a hole for the LED light to go through. So you can use a screwdriver or anything else to get that hole ready. Just shove it down through and get that hole. To make a step a little bit easier later on, it helps if you hollow out the bottom of this a little bit. No matter which crystals you're growing, you want both of them to kind of come to a point at the top. That way, your crystals can grow from that point when you put them in the solution upside down. Throw your foam on a stick and hit it with some spray paint. You can paint these whatever color you want, just as long as it looks like a rock to you when you're done. It's all about what you want it to look like. Now your fake rock chunks can sit somewhere to dry while we get the next step ready. Now you just need to pull your LED book light apart. And this is the only step that you're going to do with the book light in this video. So you're gonna open it up and take all the screws out.
Once you have all the pieces pulled apart, the very top piece can be thrown away. Don't need it. This little spring slow opener thing, you need. Keep that. Middle piece with its slow opener, springy, greasy thing, you need. Keep those. Keep both pieces of the arms and the base and the screws. Now, let's get our LED so we can get working on the next part. We're gonna clip this with enough wire that it sticks out from the bottom of your fake rock base. Because this LED has a dome top, you know it's directional. So we need to sand it down so that it disperses light throughout the crystal that we're gonna grow on top of it. Just take a small piece of sandpaper and sand some spots flat on the top of the LED. Now that your LED is sanded, you can stick it inside your fake rock if it's dry. Feed the LED wires down through the hole that you punched then wedge the LED bulb itself down into the foam about halfway. Now if you bought some of that super awesome weaponized kryptonite, you're basically ready with the LED planted. All you have to do is get a crystal stuck to the tip, which is easy. But if you want spiky, cool looking crystals, if you do the powderized kryptonite, borax you need to put something stringy in here to make it look like it has spikes on it so there's a couple different ways you can do this I'll use all three on mine the wire tie the bamboo pieces and copper wire if you use wire ties or copper wire just make sure you don't ground the LED out somehow by hitting the inside of it when you plant your wires in the foam once you have all your wires inserted we're gonna go back to that solution that you made earlier, and it probably has some crystals growing that you can use to start the seed growth on the top of your LED. If you can't see crystals growing on the bottom of your container, let it sit longer. If you do, pour the water back into the pan and add an extra tablespoon of borax to make up for the crystals that you're about to dump out onto a paper towel. After you clean out the container, rinse it, wipe it out, then filter the water that you just made a solution in back into the container, and you can add food coloring if you want to at this point, but it doesn't work that well. Then cover it up and let it sit. At this point, you're gonna go through all your crystals and pick out some that you like to glue onto the LED on the top of your rock. There's really no right answers here. If you pick one that's a single crystal, it might grow to be a bigger single crystal, but we super saturated the solution so much it's probably not gonna matter. So just pick some out and then we'll glue them on. To attach the powderized kryptonite crystals, it helps if you have tweezers and super glue. This makes the process super simple. You could probably glue it or stick it on with a whole bunch of other stuff, but this is really easy, and that's what I use. Just put some super glue right on your LED, and then arrange the crystals that you picked out. Once your super glue dries, all you need to do is wait for the solution that you just made to cool off and start to form crystals. As soon as it starts to form crystals, that means that it will not dissolve these crystals from this area here, for sure, guaranteed. So you wait for that to happen and then you put this back in the solution and you'll start to form crystals all over all of this stuff that's sticking out here. And it'll look sweet, trust me. Here you can see crystals starting to form on the bottom of the container. That means it's time to put your rock in. Use some paper clips pushed into the foam to suspend it over the top and hold it straight up and down and then cover it. If your crystals aren't growing quickly, pull your rock out, take your solution, break all the crystals off the inside of the container, warm it back up on the stove, get everything dissolved again, put it back in, wait for crystals to start to form, and then put this back in, and you'll see very quick crystal growth again, just like it happened in the beginning when this formed very fast. That's the solution. I did pull my rock out and put the solution back on the stove to dissolve all of the crystals that had formed on the container. It's very important to let it cool before you put your rock back in. You have to see crystal growth on the bottom before you know that it won't dissolve the crystals that are on your rock. It also didn't take the color very well from the food coloring, so I'm adding some over the top. And after you put this on, you can allow it to dry and then cover it with a protective layer of spray paint. I used acrylic but you don't have to use acrylic. Any gloss clear coat will do just fine. You want to protect the crystals from the atmosphere because they'll turn white and they won't look that good. If you're using the sodium thiosulfate, sulfate, you can just warm it up with a lighter. It'll melt and then you can hold it in place until it cools and it'll glue itself to your LED. That's how you attach your seed crystals. Once you have a couple crystals hardened onto your LED, 
you're ready to grow your weapons grade kryptonite. You're going to want to mark your container for the level that you want the sodium thiosulfate to be at. And there's a very good reason for this. You can't adjust the level of it with water because it's just molten sodium thiosulfate. So when you heat this up and liquefy it and let it cool again, it will not form crystals until a crystal is added to it. But when you do put your rock in with the crystal on it, it forms crystals very quickly between 30 seconds and two minutes, and you won't be able to move it around, otherwise it messes up the formation of the crystals. So, don't add food coloring either, like I did, because it also messes with the crystal formation, and I'll tell you how I fixed it from putting it in right now. The green food coloring was screwing it up, so I filtered it out with cheesecloth, and now I'm gonna try growing this, hopefully for the last time, and it'll work and look cool. My solution was still a little bit warm, so it took about two minutes to grow, but this is a short time lapse showing the crystal formation as it happens. And you can definitely tell it's going on even if it's not sped up. When you first remove your crystal, be very careful because it is fragile. Once it cools down, it'll be much more resilient, but be very careful when you first pull it out. Almost finished with the crystals. The 4X or the non-weapons grade kryptonite is finished. Uh, it looks different than the last one because I dropped it and shattered it so I had to grow another one. And then here is the weapons grade kryptonite. Uh, yeah, the fertilizer. And we're going to use this um, transparent green model paint that I picked up for a couple dollars to paint this to seal it to protect it. And then it's ready for the last step. I haven't ever used Model Master clear green before and I don't know how it's going to look but hopefully it turns out pretty good. I'm gonna do the bottom first on this little delicate stuff. See how it ends up. Well, it's not working. It's reacting with the uh, crystals and turning it into goo. I don't know why. I got a cheap airbrush on Craigslist for 20 bucks and it doesn't work very well but I'm gonna try it. Uh, I'm having issues getting this to stick because it's acrylic and it's melting. I realize because it's acrylic and it's water-based basically, it's melting the crystals because it dissolves so easy in water. So the crystal is dissolving and the paint won't stick. So I painted it uh, with spray paint to seal it and now I'm gonna try to airbrush it with this thing just to see how it works. And that sounds complicated and it's got a lot of stuff involved. You don't have to do that. You can just do the food coloring and then clear coat it with spray paint, just like we did on the other one, and it'll work out great. I'm just gonna try this. Oh, and in my little airbrush container here, I put a drop of yellow paint and some thinner, some airbrush thinner, um, and then some green. There we go. Now it's green and it looks like kryptonite. Yeah. Now that we've finished making our kryptonite, household grade and weapons grade, uh, next step is to make a containment system so that Superman doesn't know that you have the kryptonite. He won't be able to feel it because this blocks everything and it's made out of this dollar foam board and this dollar book light, which is why we saved all these pieces for the next part of the project. So subscribe to catch the next video so that you can know how to make this with its secret little button that opens it and turns on the LED light inside the kryptonite. Don't forget, there's links in the description to some of the stuff that I used because it can be difficult to find. My name is Lex Luthor. Thanks for watching.